If you've just moved to Toronto or you're a local using public transit for the first time, you might be wondering how to get around the city and beyond. Using public transportation is a great alternative to driving a car, especially when you're on a tight budget and on a mission to save money. So in this video today, I'm going to walk you through the different ways to get around Toronto and let's also talk a bit about how affordable, connected, punctual or not punctual Toronto's transit system really is. What I love about Toronto's transit system is that there are a variety of transit modes that you can use and combine. There's the TDC or the Toronto Transit Commission, which consists of subway, streetcars and buses. There's the Up Express connecting Pearson's Airport and the downtown area, My Way for Mississauga, Go Train and Go Buses, Bike Share and a Bike Lane System and the Via Rail and Mega Bus that connect you to surrounding areas. Let's take a closer look at each of these. First up, the subway, which covers the areas of Toronto and Vaughan running mostly underground. Right now, there are three lines. Line 1 running north-south from Finch in a U-shape meeting at Union Station in the south and then up to Vaughan. Line 2 from Kipling in the west to Kennedy Station in the east, soon to be extended to Shepherd Avenue and McCone. Then there's line 4 which just goes from Shepherd and Young to Don Mills. And there are also three more lines which are under construction, Line 5 Eglinton and Line 6 Finch West, hopefully opening this year. And in case you're wondering about Line 3, Line 3 has closed a while ago. I personally love taking the subway because it's so fast. It takes about 30 minutes from Finch to Union Station and 46 minutes to go from east to west. Line 1 and 2 run every 2 to 3 minutes during rush hours and every 4 to 5 minutes outside of rush hours. So you can just go to the subway station knowing that a train will arrive soon. And the easiest way to pay for your fare is using a Presto card which you tap to pass through the gates and will cost you $3.30 per ride. But there are mainly two problems with Toronto's subway system. The first one is frequent service disruptions. I couldn't find the stats but I would say that there is at least one service disruption somewhere on the line each day, causing a 1-5 to five minutes or more delay, sometimes even longer, resulting in replacement buses to take over. And with a much much smaller capacity of these, it just gets super packed. The other problem is that since a while ago, safety has become an increasing issue on the subway. The CBC reported that violence against Toronto transit passengers rose 46% last year compared to 2021. There were 145 violent incidents against passengers in December alone. Although I'd say it's still relatively safe on the subway, just be vigilant when you're using public transportation. The next mode of transportation are buses, also part of the TTC. You can get almost anywhere in Toronto just by riding the bus, combined with a perhaps 5 minute walk or so. There are almost 130 regular lines, then there are other services like night routes that operate only at night and the express network, for example buses going to the airport. Same here, you pay $3.30 using a Presto card and there's even a 2 hour window during which you can transit for free. And at most subway stations, you will find a bus terminal with buses that connect you to the surrounding areas. The punctuality of buses vary largely depending on the line, but I would definitely not count on buses if I have to be somewhere important, like an interview for example. While some are punctual, on some other lines you can wait for up to half an hour. It's like, what are bus schedules for then? Next up are streetcars. Now one thing that I love about streetcars, especially when I first arrived here in Toronto is that it makes it so easy to navigate downtown Toronto using these. And the network is so easy to understand. Unlike bus lines, the streetcar lines are neatly arranged in a grid. And yes, the two hour free transit window applies to streetcars as well. I'd say that streetcars are somewhat more punctual than buses in general, but, but they're just awfully slow. End of last year, there was a pilot project done on King Street, the Transit Corridor Pilot Project, and surprisingly, according to City News, Eastbound travel times from Bathurst to Jarvis, for example, during the evening rush hours averaged 19 to 26 minutes before the pilot program in 2017, but the latest times show it's now even worse with an average of 22 to 29 minutes. So for those of you who are not familiar with Toronto, here's the stretch that we're talking about, Bathurst to Jarvis, 
during the evening rush hours takes an average of 22 to 29 minutes using the streetcar. Walking that same distance would take you about 37 minutes according to Google Maps or perhaps 33 minutes if you're walking briskly. The other problem with streetcars is that there have been so many service disruptions, especially with the 501 line, one of the major lines, due to never-ending constructions. But if you have time and you're not in a rush, then it's actually quite fun to take the streetcar. Especially as a newcomer, it's really pleasant to just sit in the streetcar, drive through the streets, and do some sightseeing through the windows. By the way, if you've just moved to Canada, you might experience some geo-blocking for certain websites and content that were previously accessible in your home country. But did you know that just by using a VPN, you can bypass geo-blocks? A VPN can also do all sorts of other great things for your privacy and for your wallet. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and the one I'm using and totally love is CyberGhost VPN. When your VPN is on, your IP address is hidden, making you anonymous on the web. It's as though you're browsing from different locations. All your traffic on the internet goes through an encrypted VPN tunnel, so you're protected from hackers who want to steal your data. Also, CyberGhost has a no-logs policy, so no one will know about your online activity. With CyberGhost VPN, you can also access geo-blocked content, movies, TV series that are available in other countries, on over 40 streaming platforms including Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and many more. You can also use CyberGhost VPN to find the cheapest hotel and flight deals, as depending on the country that you browse from, you'll oftentimes get shown different prices. It's very easy to use and great for beginners. Just change your online location in three clicks. And their 24-7 customer support is there if you ever need help. CyberGhost VPN has over 38 million users and has an excellent rating on Trustpilot. If you sign up to CyberGhost VPN now using my link in the description, it will only cost you $2.03 per month. And you'll also get four months for free, the best deal ever. And you can save even more money by sharing your CyberGhost VPN subscription with family and friends as it covers up to seven devices. And it works on most operating platforms, including Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, Android, Smart TV, and even gaming consoles. There's no risk in trying out CyberGhost VPN as there's a 45-day money-back guarantee. So click on my link in the descriptions and try it out. Now back to the video. One tip, if you're planning to use public transportation in Toronto on a daily basis, then I'd suggest that you consider a monthly pass. The monthly TTC pass for adults is currently $156 and $143 for the 12-month pass. And for post-secondary students, there is a discount, so it's only $128.15. If you're making enough trips per month, then this option might be worth it. But overall, I wouldn't say that this is really cheap. Considering the overall cost of living nowadays in Toronto, having to pay this much money for public transportation is quite a lot. Anyways, there are also special discounts for senior and youth. But to use those, first you will need to change the setting on your Presto card, which you can do online. Next up is the Up Express. If you're arriving at Pearson's Airport, definitely consider taking the Up Express. It's a great way to connect to downtown Toronto, Blur, or Western Station. It just takes 25 minutes to get from Pearson's Airport Terminal 1 to Union Station. And yes, from there you can connect to the TDC, Subway Line 1, the Streetcar, Go Transit, and also Via Rail. The Up Express runs every 15 minutes and the train is quite clean and comfortable. It also has special luggage compartments for your luggage. And again, if you use your Presto card, you will get a special fare for just $9.25 from Pearson's Airport to Union Station. And if you're three or more people, you can also buy a group pass, which is only available online by the way, for just $25. Taking an Uber, on the other hand, would cost you approximately $50 to $60, including tip. Now, my way is the public transit serving Mississauga. My way's routes connect with GO Transit along with Brampton Transit to the north, Oakville Transit to the southwest, Milton Transit to the northwest, Toronto Transit Commission or the TDC to the east, and York Region Transit to the northeast. See, here is where Toronto's transit system ends, so to go to Mississauga, you would connect somewhere here. And yes, you can also use your Pesto on my way. And by the way, one more tip for those of you using Google Wallet, you can also upload your Presto card to Google Wallet. Next up are Go Trains and Go Buses. Go Transit is extremely useful if you want to cover longer distances. Here's a map of the regional Go Trains and Go Buses. You can get as far as Guelph in the west, Newmarket and Bradforth in the north, Ajax and Oshawa in the east, and Niagara Falls in the south. 
But the GO Transit is also useful within Toronto. For example, a trip on the GO train from Markham to Union Station would cost you $9.25 and take around 45 minutes. About the same time it would take you to drive. But in the meantime, if you're in the GO train, you can just sit back, relax, or do some work. Or catch up on that sleep. You can also save on your fare using your Pesto card, as there's this discount scheme here. And there are also special discounts for seniors and students. But just in case you do not want to buy a Presto card, which will initially cost you $4 for the card, then you can also use your debit or credit card to pay for your fare. Simply tap your debit or credit cards at the Presto device at the gates. And the same also goes when you're using the TTC. Just remember that while on the TTC system, you only tap on, tap your card onto the device when you get on the vehicle, the subway, streetcar or bus. Whereas on the GO Transit, GO trains and GO buses, you have to tap on when you get on it and also tap off when you get off the GO train or GO bus so that the system can calculate what fare to charge you. And one great thing about GO Transit is that if you're planning to go on a weekend trip, then they have this thing called the weekend day pass for just $10, which you can use, for example, to go to Niagara Falls, and you can even make multiple stops on the way. So far, I've taken the GO Transit, and I'd say that it is quite punctual. But yes, there are delays here and there. GO Transit actually has a service guarantee where you can apply for credit if the train is more more than 15 minutes late, but honestly, I've never bothered to claim it. Now, before we get to Via Rail and Megabus, let's just briefly talk about biking in town. Yes, Toronto has bike lanes and yes, they're being expanded, but right now the network, the lane, bike lane grid is still quite patchy, I would say. But yes, if you want to, you can get around Toronto on your bike, although it may not be optimal everywhere. One great thing is that you can bring your bike on the subway, on the streetcar, and even on the bus. If you're planning to take your bike on the bus, simply tell the bus driver before you get on it that you want to load your bike. And then you yourself can just secure it on the rack in front of the bus. At first, I must say I was a bit intimidated by it, but actually it's very easy to do. So we did it a couple of times and it did look a bit shaky, but it seemed to hold. Now, if you don't have your own bike, you can also use bike share. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of their bikes just because they're so massive. But if you only bike once in a while and don't want to buy your own bike, then it can be fun. Just be aware that bike share charges a relatively high deposit amount and they will hold that amount for a few days. And then there are scooters. I've seen many people use scooters on the streets. And yes, we also tried it for a while, but I don't really think that Toronto streets are really made for that. Now next up is Via Rail. And I have a bit of a love and hate relationship with Via Rail. The great thing is that Via Rail can take you as far as Vancouver, Montreal, Halifax, or as near as Kitchener and Oakville. And sometimes, you know, taking the train can be a wonderful experience. Unlike taking a flight, you don't need to go through the hassle of going to the airport, checking in and everything. We've taken the Via Rail to Montreal last year and it was actually quite enjoyable, if not for the interruptions and the slow speed. It's supposed to take us about five hours to go from Toronto to Montreal, which is about 550 kilometers away. But last spring when we took the VR rail there, it took us almost six hours. Talking about price, without a discount code, a ticket to Montreal can cost anywhere from $54 to $169 before tax. And yes, VR Rail 2 offers travel credits in case of travel delays, but what does it really matter if you've already lost the time? In any case, if you take the VR Rail, be sure to make use of the special offers, such as Discount Tuesdays and the loyalty programs. Lastly, there's also the Mega Bus. A trip from Toronto to Kingston, for example, would cost you about $50 plus and last around three hours. Taking the bus for long distance travel is not really my favorite, but it's a good option to have. The only route that we tried so far with Megabus was from Montreal to Kingston as it was cheaper. The buses, I'd say, weren't that great, really. Go buses have much, much better interiors, but surprisingly, the Megabus was on time. 
So all in all, it's pretty easy to get around Toronto and even beyond, but punctuality is not always a thing. And that's why it's really good to always have a backup option in your pocket. I have both the Uber and the Lyft app on my phone. So if I have to be somewhere really important and I notice that there seems to be a major delay with public transit, I can just use Uber or Lyft. And in Toronto, so far, it's only taken me about three to five minutes to get a ride. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know your questions in the comment section below. I usually respond to comments within the first three days and also share with me your personal experience of using the transit system in Toronto. And one more thing, don't forget to check out CyberGhost VPN. Click on my link in the descriptions below to get their awesome deal for just $2.03 per month plus four months for free. This application will protect your data while you browse and give you full access to all blog content on the internet. And if you change your mind for whatever reason, you can get your money back within 45 days, so there's no risk. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye!